Durham region. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Hello, and welcome to another episode of A Little Bit Fit with me, Karen Ross. So today you are going to need water. As always, you're going to need your chair with no arms, and you're going to need your weights. Okay, two weights, um, or no weights at all, or soup cans, whatever you got going on. Uh, remember, you don't have to use weights if you don't have any. So you can do everything with just range of motion. So before we get to our workout, let's talk about our fit tip of this episode. People ask me all the time, they say, well, I know I need to have physical activity, but how much? How much? What do the medical experts say as to how much physical activity should you be getting? Well, 150 minutes per week. That sounds like a lot, doesn't it? But when you do the math, it works out to, and this is the exact number, 21.4286 minutes per day. That is not a lot. We round up to 30 minutes a day. Um, so I, I, I hear what you're thinking. You're like, well, I don't have, I don't have time to do that. I can't, I can't take 30 minutes out of what I'm doing. And yes, I know you're busy. Me too. Um, that's okay. You can do it 10 minutes at a time, 10 minutes at a time. Sometimes you end up doing more physical activity when you break it up like that, because you've got 10 minutes, you can do 10 minutes at a time several times a day. Sometimes it's better to do that because when you do your 30 minutes and then you become inactive, that just undoes all the good you just did working hard for that 30 minutes. So you want to uh, start tracking your sedentary time. Sometimes we sit way too much and we don't realize it, okay? So keep moving. Put some music on that you like and have yourself a little dance party, all right? So move 150 minutes a week, 30 minutes equals 30 minutes a day. So grab your stuff and I'll see you right here in these many seconds. All right, let's get the cardio going. I'm not going to start with a sway today. I'm starting with heel taps and finger snaps. Remember, we're warming up for the first 30 seconds to a minute into our cardio. If you don't want to follow along to what I'm doing, you do whatever you want. Breathe, move, breathe. That's cardio. Breathe. Just get everything moving. Push one more time. Side tap. All right. 
pump those arms. March in your chair. Pump it. The bigger you pump your arms, the more you spike your heart rate. A little bit faster. Reach, reach, reach. Remember when you take your hands above your head, your heart rate automatically goes up. If this isn't too intense, just push to the front. Do one of each. Push, reach, push, reach. We're gonna up our tempo. Here we go. Out, up, out, up. Breathe. Stay to one side. Switch. 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 Two more times. Last one like this. Heel tap it. Breathe. Push it away. Push it back. Push, push. I just hit my wall. Uh. Push it away. Keep pushing. Out to the side. or push to the front, whatever you like. Get out of your chair and dance if you want. Push, 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 back. Push, breathe. Don't let anything hurt. Here we go, four taps to the side. Out, up, out, switch. Or just keep your arms to the front, whatever you like. Breathe. Keep it going. Change, quicker changes each side. Here we go. Two, two, switch, two, switch, two, switch. Breathe. Come on, you've got this. Breathe. Take your intensity down if you need to, or if you need to up your intensity, bigger range of motion. Here we go, one, out, up, out, up, breathe. Woo! Let's start bringing it down. Push, push, good job. Side. tempo.
breathe, start bringing it down. your heels. Leave your toes on the floor. Breathe. Catch your breath here. Bring it all the way down. You already know what I'm going to tell you. Keep swaying. Sip your water. And I will see you right back here in two seconds for our strength training. Okay. So it's time to strength train. We are going to start with, I call it a sit to stand. Um, a lot of the times we forget when we're sitting down or standing up how we need to position our body to be able to do that effectively without hurting our back, hurting our legs, and especially hurting the knees. I'm going to turn my chair sideways and show you what not to do. This is what I see. I'm very observant. When I go places, I watch people to see what they're doing to hurt themselves. So this is what I see. People are lounging in their chair. They tuck their feet under and they go to get up. I'm already feeling pain in my knees. They're on their toes and they do this. And then they travel forward when they shouldn't. So they're using the wrong muscles to come up out of that chair. If you're having a conversation with someone, stop the conversation, align your body, put yourself into proper posture. You don't, you want your 90 degree angles happening here. You're going to use your tummy muscles in the fronts of your legs to get yourself up out of that chair without launching yourself forward six or seven times and then shooting off like a missile. So here we go. I'm not going to touch my legs. I've engaged my core. I've started my lean forward. I'm going to push my weight into my heels. And I'm going to stand up out of my chair. I have my non-slip mat here. So my chair doesn't slide away from me. When I sit down, same thing. I position myself in front of my chair. I lead with my butt. And I sit down gently into my chair. I don't slam myself into my chair because that wrecks your tailbone, and it jars all the way up into the top of your head. So we'll do that one more time. Then I'm going to turn and face you. Up we go. Down we go. Now, next question is, I find it really difficult getting down off of my chair. I understand that happens. Okay, so you put something on your chair to make it higher. And that way, you can practice with a little bit of height. Okay, so you decide whether you're going to make your chair higher by putting a pillow or two on it, or whether you're just going to give it a try with the regular height of your chair. So I'm going to turn to face you now. And we're going to do this together. So this is what the posture looks like from the front. Okay, so get your 90 degree angles going, put your pillow on your chair if you have a hard time getting off of your chair at the height that it's at. So here we go, engage your tummy, feel your quad muscles, put your weight into your heels, get that little lean forward, dig into your heels and stand up. Sit back down, lead with your rear and sit back down. Sitting back down is harder than getting up sometimes because you're controlling your weight is harder than lifting your weight. So up we go. Down we go. Up we go. Notice I'm not moving my feet. They're staying where they stay the whole darn time. Up I go. Down I go. We're going to do two more, okay? Up we come. Down we go, one more time. Up we go, down we go. 
nicely done. So practice your sit and stand. And if you need something to make your chair a little higher, if you're really struggling, if you're doing one of these to try to launch yourself out of your chair, please use something to make your the seat of your chair a little bit higher. All right, I'm going to take a sip of water. And then we're going to take our weights. We're going to do our rotator cuff. All right, light weights or no weights, okay? Rotator cuff all the way around your shoulder. And it's one of the things that is very easily injured uh, the older you get. So we want to work on, on keeping it strong and hopefully it won't injure as you get older. So you're going to sit to the front of your chair, move your feet forward, and you're going to bring your weights here. So my arms are like in an L shape, okay? Then I'm gonna come out, dig your elbows into the side of your body as you come out into a wide V, not a T, a V. Bring them back in. Out we go. Bring them in. Out we go, dig your elbows into the sides of your body. There's no space between your upper arm and the side of your body. Out we go, breathe. In we go, your core is engaged. You're sitting tall with your book on your head. Out, dig those elbows in. Bring your hands in. Out we go. In we come. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, two more, breathe out, breathe in, being mindful in your movement, last one, breathe out, breathe in and release and swing, nicely done, nicely done. Good job. All right. Just release that a little bit. We're going to put one weight down. This next one, I call it an, uh, I just have a nickname for it. I call it up, out, and in, but it's actually a knee lift shoulder press with uh, a descent down to the front. So hang on to your weight. One on one hand on either end, or you don't need anything at all. You can be hanging onto a towel. All right, so we're going to lift our knee as we push the weight up, extend your leg, bring it in, switch sides, lift, extend, bring it in, lift, extend, bring it in, lift, extend, bring it in. Lift, extend, bring it in. Make sure you're breathing. Lift, extend, bring it in. Lift, extend, one more. Lift, extend, bring it in and shake that out. Nice work. Grab your water and I will see you right back here for our stretch. All right, let's get that stretch going. And stretching is really important for the recovery of your muscles. So here we go. Bring yourself to the front of your chair. Sit up nice and tall. You're going to extend a heel forward. Pull your toe toward your body. We've done this one before not a new one. So sit up nice and tall. Hang on to your chair behind your hips and hinge forward with a straight spine, allowing yourself to look down at the floor as you hinge forward. As soon as you feel tension in the back of that straight leg, that's where you stop. Let that tension go away before you move your chest forward more. Breathe. Let that tension go away.
then come back up to tall. Let's do the other side. Extend, straighten your leg. Next step, pull your toe toward your body. Straighten your spine, shoulders back and down. Moving your chest toward your turned up toe. Nice stretch in the back of that leg through the hamstring, back of the knee and the calf. Breathe. Looking down at the floor, keep the back of your neck open. Breathe. Come back up to tall. Bring the feet together. This next one we're gonna do several times. It's a shoulder roll press. So we're going to pull the shoulders up, push them back, push them down, and hold. Reach for the floor. Reach for the floor. Push those shoulders down, down, down. Breathe. Let's do it again. Up, back, push them down. Breathe. That's where your shoulders are supposed to be. They're here most of the time, pinching everything, all the blood vessels and nerves that go to your brain, that go to your head. So you want to keep those unpinched. And this is one of the ways you can do that. Let's do that two more times. Pull it up, roll it back, push those shoulders down toward the floor. Keep that book on your head. Push those shoulders down. Breathe. One more time. Up, back, push them down. Breathe. Hold, breathe, sit tall. And let your arms swing, good job. Let your arms swing. All right, we're gonna open the chest and the fronts of the armpits. Make some earmuffs. Start with your elbows to the front and then you're gonna open. Moving those shoulder, or your elbows behind your body without leaning back. So open it up, hold right there. Hold right there. Breathe. Allow your elbows to come to the front. Take a breath. Now one more time, open it up. Nice and tall. release and again let those arms swing release the rotator cuffs just let your arms swing all right moving to the wrists and the forearms make your stop sign support all of your finger joints keep this arm nice and straight but low support your finger joints pull back you want to feel a stretch underneath the wrist this is one of the stretches that, that we ignore a lot, the wrists and the forearms. Um, and we focus on the bigger muscle groups, but really your wrists and your forearms do a lot of work all day long. So we really need to pay attention to them when they're, we're stretching out just a little bit more than we usually do. Fingers pointing down, press on the back of your hand, avoiding your finger joints, keeping your arm nice and straight. It looks like this from the side. Nice and tall, always maintaining pop, proper posture. Let's go to the other side. Stop sign. Straighten your arm, drop that hand low and support all of your finger joints. Feeling stretch underneath the wrist. Breathe.
and fingers down, press top of the wrist, top of the forearm. Breathe. And release and just shake that out. Nicely done, everyone. Great work. So I will grab my water and I will see you back up there in two seconds. Well, there's another episode done. Nice work, everyone. Again, celebrate the small victories because they add up to enormous gains. Um, so just going to recap our sit stand. When you're doing the sit stand, make sure that your, your chair is on a non-slip surface, okay? And if you're having a hard time getting up out of that chair without launching yourself, put a pillow on it put a pillow on it and practice proper form, getting in and out of your chair. Make sure that your body is aligned. Everything is facing forward. Your knees are at the 90 degree angle. You want your hips at 90 degrees. You want your knees at 90 degrees. You want your ankles at 90 degrees and you push into your heels, not your toes when you go to stand up. So practice your sit stands. It will take the pain out of your knees and um, strengthen the legs and strengthen the core. All right. So let's recap our fit tip now. So how much activity, physical activity, do you need? Well, health experts say 100, at least 150 minutes per week, at least. If you can manage more, good on you. If you're struggling with 150 minutes, that's okay. Remember, you start where you are. The 150 minutes a week breaks down to 21.42 minutes per day. Round it up to 30 minutes if you can. And that way, if you need to break up that 30 minutes into three segments instead of one 30-minute segment, that's kind of even better because you're continuing to move. You want to, with what's that thing? Things in motion tend to stay in motion. They do. And the more you stay in motion, the better for your, your heart, your lungs, your muscles, your joints. Okay. When you sit, everything gets stuck. So you want to keep moving. Um, several bursts a day. You can't manage that 30 seconds or 30 minutes. Keep going. Just keep going. Break it up. Um, so keep moving. Dance to the beat of your own music, but just keep moving. So thank you again, everyone, for joining me again today. And remember, uh, the more you know, knowledge is power. So the more you know, the more you can grow. So take care, be well, and I will see you again very soon. Connect with us on social media. Was that four or five? He's lost count and still thinks he can drive. Do you think he knows that when he is caught and charged with impaired driving, he'll lose his license and a lot more? If he gets in his car, he'll face costs exceeding $20,000. Does he realize he could have a criminal record for his choice to drive? And it could be much worse if he crashes. I wonder what he'll be thinking tomorrow. Visit ArrivalLive.org to find out more. Arrive Alive. Drive so. Hi, I'm Scott Clark, host of Our Historic Home Durham. We hope you join us as we explore the historic sites, people, and places that our region has to offer. That's Our Historic Home Durham, here only on Rogers TV. 